Dr. Dre is in need of our help. His phone full of unreleased records has been stolen and he needs us to get it back before it's leaked to the public. This is one of the toughest jobs our boy Desmond has been asked to do yet. Can he pull it off? Why don't you just wait and see? It was a pretty typical evening for Desi. He was driving around the city in his brand new ruiner and thinking of ways to dehumanize his assistant. Until suddenly he got a call from Franklin, which sounded very, very promising. Listen, I got some news for us. I don't want to say too much over the phone, but remember that big client I was fishing for? We got a meeting over at the golf club. So just head over there when you ain't handling shit for the office, all right? He told us to head on over to the golf club where we would be having a meeting with a mystery client. So we moseyed on over and started up the first mission. Now, I was planning on doing this solo, but clearly looking at TikToks for too long was a mistake and a random person joined by the name of Venification. Now, of course, I could just kick him, but I thought why not give this guy a chance? I will soon come to regret that decision. Anyways, we started up the mission, got into our fire outfit and met up with the man himself, Dr. Dre. It was an absolute pleasure to be in the presence of such a golfing prodigy. Yo, Dre. Unfortunately, Dre's flow state was interrupted by a bunch of sad middle-aged men who undoubtedly are not loved by their children or their wives. No, screw this. I still have friends on the board. My wife's having an affair with the owner. Oh, I guess I was right. The weenies backed off for a little while and Dre had some time to explain the situation to us. To put it simply, his phone with a bunch of unreleased music was stolen and we need to get it back and make sure it doesn't get leaked. Desmond has robbed casinos, taken down corrupt government organizations and saved the world from ever having to hear Laszlo DJ. So this should be easy enough. However, our first task wouldn't be anything to do with the phone situation just yet. Instead, we chose to chase down the two cucks in golf carts. Why we couldn't just drive a normal car, I have no idea, but let's just roll with it. To make sure these lads wouldn't call the board to report Dre, we had to intimidate them, which normally means something like, I don't know, pointing a gun at their face. But no, we had to settle for ramming into their golf carts with our golf carts. I guess Franklin is a big fan of dodging cars or something, I don't know. Anyways, it still was a relatively easy task that we managed to get done first time. Bro, how did you even manage that? Yeah, so my teammate somehow managed to destroy his own golf cart in central Los Santos. Believe me, I don't know how he pulled it off either. Despite my immense concern for the mental state of my partner, I gave him another shot. And after ramming into the little bitch's cart enough, he finally decided to run away to the pier. I'm not sure exactly what his plan was, but we followed him all the way there, and Franklin wanted us to give him a friendly golf lesson. Even if my teammate did get a little bit trigger happy, we did actually manage to give him the beatdown he was asking for. And he promised not to contact the golfing board in regards to Dre and his temperament, to say the least. With that mission completed, our partnership to work with Dre on getting his phone back was put in place, and I headed over to my agency to get started with the real work. This should be fun. Heading upstairs, I met up with Franklin and Imani, who was playing web browser games while she was supposed to be on the job, which is something I definitely don't do at my job. Hmm. But anyways, we were soon filled in with the bad news. Tracking the phone wasn't going to be as easy as we thought because it had some extra layers of security, meaning that to get past them, we needed to break into the FIB and grab their surveillance program data so we can track the phone. And Marnie seems to think that this was an impossible task, but she clearly doesn't know who she's dealing with. You got Franklin Clinton, a criminal mastermind with years of experience breaking into and taking down every goddamn organization you can think of. And then you have Desmond. He will do something, hopefully. As usual, Lamar crashed the party and tried to market his uh, business to us. His business being selling the lean, mean, green machine, marijuana. But it seems we didn't need to help Lamar sell a supply because we already have our first happy customer. Man, that dog high as fuck. After Lamar and Franklin carried away the victim, we headed over to our office to get started with the mission, data recovery. We left the agency in our company helicopter and flew over to the FIB building, infiltrating it by cutting a hole in the skylight and dropping in. The communications room where the data is stored, it was just a few steps away, but due to an updated security system, Imani couldn't open the door while the building's fire alarm was on, so we had to go old school and blow it to smithereens. Which comes with the added cost of being, you know, heard. So instead of getting in and out of here stealthily, Desmond now had to deal with dozens of armed guards. Typical day at work for him, really. A few months ago, this would have been a difficult job, but our boy has come a long way in his ability in combat since moving to Los Santos. A and the grenade launcher helped a lot as well. Anyways, the data was collected and we also picked up a separate hard drive that Armani requested and then we left the building. I opted to parachute down, hoping that this would be the best way to lose the heat and return safely. It got a little bit sketchy with so many cops just sitting on the bridge above me, but once my mechanic delivered my Karuma, I was 
was home free. Back at the agency, I headed upstairs to hand deliver the goods to my boy Franklin, who was chilling out and smoking while I just infiltrated the FIB. I'm starting to doubt whether this business partnership is really equal or not. I then walked back downstairs to chill out on the couch while I waited for the call about our next step of action. But after waiting for such a long time, I got impatient and headed up to the roof. Finally, after getting outside that conference call I was waiting on got started and Amani filled us in on the bad news. Unfortunately, three separate people managed to get their hands on Dre's phone data, which means we have three guys to stop from leaking the music instead of just one, making this task just a little bit more difficult. All the important details was on our computer inside our office. All we need to do now is go and choose our first target. But Desmond being Desmond, instead of taking the stairs down like a normal person, he wanted to parachute off the building for a bit of a thrill. Ah! 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 Oh, oh god. Oh. Oh, thank God that was a dream. It seems that while waiting for the phone call in the first place, Desmond fell asleep on the couch, which led to such a strangely realistic dream. Anyways, while we were sleeping, it seems Franklin and Amani had the call without me because all the info was already loaded onto the computer. And wait, now that I think about it, how did Desmond's dream accurately predict what Imani was going to say? Maybe Desi's a bit more special than we originally thought. Oh well, no time for that. The clock is ticking and Dre's music is still out there, and we gotta get it back. The three leaks we have found come from the Los Santos Nightlife, High Society, and the gangs respectively. It doesn't matter which order we do these in, it just has to get done. So we went ahead and chose the Nightlife fleek to investigate first. Now hopefully with the recent acquisition of his own nightclub, Desmond will have a small boost in confidence going into this mission. But to be honest, there is nothing more scary than a room full of American pretending to be drunk off of piss water, aka their beer. Luckily for us, there seemed to be no party goers attending the club tonight. Just a lot of sweaty men guarding the place. Now that's more my style. We made quick work of the armed forces inside, picked up a security tape which I imagine has some details about who has access to the leaked songs, and headed out through the front door with Desmond hanging on to life by a thread. Uh, yeah, the thread kind of broke. Anyways, once we came to, Desmond took down the remaining guards outside, got in his car, and delivered the tape back to the agency. While waiting for an update from Amani and Franklin on the next task, we headed to Literal Hell to pick up some snacks. And can't forget to put the gas mask on. And then we headed over to our ammunition to resupply the body armor. We then visited our agency once again to start up the next mission. where we set out to Puerto del Sol Marina to look for a speedboat that will hopefully show the GPS location of where this little rat of a human has been going recently. After finding the boat and getting in, we noticed the recent GPS markers lead to a yacht out on the sea, because of course it does. So being the civil citizen we are, we roll up to the yacht, take out every guard on board with extreme measures, and find a little bit of evidence we were looking for. It seems that this rich piece of shit is planning to host a party in his penthouse at the Diamond Casino and show off all of Dre's secret tracks to the people attending. Well, if he thinks that's gonna work, he's got another thing coming, because Big Boy Dez is going to rain on his parade. Due to the excitement of taking down this little brat, I hurried back to the agency as fast as I could, but while driving back, the game kind of crashed. Damn, this thing more buggy than Saints Row. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Or was I? I loaded back up the game, started up the third mission in the Nightlife Leaks section, got into gear and headed over to my destination. I made my way into the casino garage, took the lift upstairs and casually made my way over to the penthouse. I then walked on over to the main dance floor and found our suspect sitting in his little DJ booth playing Dre's new songs. I thought for once I'd try to be polite and ask nicely if I could take his stuff, but well... How do you like that music equipment, lad? Uh, mind if I have it? No? Alright. What the hell are you doing? You see, this is why I resort to violence in the first place. It just gets shit done. I'm not authorized to give any actual advice in regard to the behavior, social conduct, or being a fucking legend. Any actions performed or set by Desmond is for storytelling purposes only. Please do not take anything I say as recommendations or gospel on how to handle life situations, batteries are included. After massacring the entire security force at this party, I managed to chase down the music promoter, and he turned into a little bitch real quick. Well, considering what I just did to his party, I'm not surprised. I would probably be scared shitless too. All we had to do now was escape the casino and get the backpack full of stolen music back to the agency. But come on now, our boy Desmond has actually robbed the Diamond Casino like three times so getting out of here was a piece of cake and with that the first of our three leads was taken care of damn this shit is gonna take a while but make sure to stick around because we've got some great content coming up and while you're at it make sure to smash that subscribe button we're trying to hit 5k before the end of the year so every person helps well no time to waste there's still two people out there with dre's music and we gotta hunt them down so we went back up to the computer to start the second mission and great we gotta go to the high society
Fantastic. You know, Desmond might be quite affluent himself at this point, but those old white money hoarding elites can suck my dick. This mission had us go out to visit the Pacific Bluffs Country Club, and I decided to take the company helicopter to speed things up a little bit. And don't worry, I won't jump out and let it crash and burn this time. Once we landed, we headed over to the surveillance room, attempting to sneak by the security cameras outside. But I guess wearing a super reflective white coat at night didn't help too much with trying to be stealthy. No matter though, because the security inside the building still stood no chance against the bestial wrath of Desmond the Danger Man. Okay, don't judge the nickname, I'm running out of synonyms to start with the letter D, okay? We then quickly hacked a security terminal to find out where the phone data has been taken off to. It seems that we're looking for a limousine in the Del Perro general vicinity, so we flew on over and... Don't worry, I won't jump out and let it crash and burn this time. Yeah, I lied. Anyways, we then landed back on solid ground, stole an innocent's car and began to tail the Humvee limo to where it was headed. And that turned out to be some mansion next to our beloved golf course. We then took a picture of the front gate and sent it to Amani. I'm assuming so that she can find a secure way into the property, but you'll see later that uh, we didn't really need that. But that marks the end of this mission. We found a house exhilarating. So we headed back to the office and it seems Desmond was getting a bit worked up from the stress of his operation and is maybe starting to lose it a bit. Yeah, get off my property! Ooh. But don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him to make sure he doesn't go totally insane, if he hasn't yet already. Back in my office, Imani gave us the lowdown on the situation with the mansion and well... So it belongs to Ben Brooks, crypto investor. What the hell you want with Dre music? Yeah, it's weird, right? So, I did a little digging, and it looks like he wants to use it as an NFT. God fucking damn it, man. Well, at least now I have even more of a reason to take this whack job down. But on to the important part. Our plan to get into the mansion is to find this crypto jackass's lawyer because he will be able to get through the front of that gate of his. This lawyer of his was located up in the Vinewood Hills, and well, it was easy enough for your boy Des. Simple as taking down an array of guards, tasing the lawyer, sticking him in the back of the car, getting that car stuck, fighting off some goons, getting the car unstuck, uh, this... This car is so garbage! Let me drive! Oh my god, Rockstar, what the actual fu- And driving the car with the incapacitated lawyer in the boot back to the agency. Just as simple as that. But now with our leak identified, location pinpointed, and way of entry, collected, it's time to take this NFT, also known as non-effable trash, down. Okay, so you know how I said earlier that I wasn't going to need a method to open these gates? Well, uh, yeah, that's because I'm a big bumbling idiot and somehow managed to do this. What? What did I do? I'm so confused. What did I do wrong? So apparently right, you're meant to enter the gate code from inside the car, which let's just be honest here, makes no sense whatsoever. The keypad is literally right on the wall. How the hell am I pressing it from inside the car? Or, uh, I, uh, whatever. It was just going to turn into another bloodbath anyways, so enjoy, I guess. <laughs> While Desmond was busy getting his share of human souls, the unlovable virgin escaped to his helicopter, and I had the fantastic job of chasing it down. It eventually flew just off the coast of the military base to yet another private yacht. Real creative rockstar. Couldn't have used another location for us to fight this time? No? Alright. Are you serious, man? I did it. Ah! I don't really have any context for that clip. I just wanted to put it in there to show you how incompetent I am. Once we reached the boat, it was the same old shabam of taking out the guards. But once I got to my target, I made sure to make his demise a little more personal. <laughs> Remember, kids, don't buy NFTs. Buy... Uh, literally anything else. We then reclaimed the phone, stole the now deceased man's helicopter, and headed back to home base to deliver the second set of leaked data. Oh, and the reason why I'm in my car is because the helicopter kind of died halfway home. I really don't have a good track record with flying these thingies, do I? But now with two thirds of the data leaks recovered, it's time to track down that final piece. And that means we're headed off to the southern central Los Santos region to take part in a bit of a gang war. Let's get into it. Now, luckily for us, due to Mr. Franklin Clinton's humble roots, he has set us up with a contact down in Davis. Goes by the name of Vernon, and hopefully he can help us with this whole Dr. Dre situation. So we met up with Vernon, and once again, I seem to be the driver, which I have no issue with. I just thought with being all rich and shit, I'd have a personal driver or something. But anyways, we made our way over to La Mesa to bust up a drug operation. In this business, it's back scratches back. So by helping Vernon and his crew with this, then he'll give us the info he knows about this data leak. We pulled up, took out the dealers, and got in the van with the <coughs> stuff. Then we made our getaway. 
well, eventually we did. After some incredible driving from your main man Des, the lost MC and the cops lost sight of us, and we were home clear. Delivering the van and the supplies to the drop-off completed the mission, and we just had to wait for Vernon to contact us with all the details. Once again, I made a quick pit stop for some body armor, which was a good decision in hindsight, because oh boy did I need it. Then I headed back to our agency to find out what's the sitch. Now according to Vernon, the bowlers had their hands all over this, and we are going to take the fight to them. So I drove on over to the car park to meet up with the boys, and Rockstar refused to let me drive my own car even though it has bulletproof tires and armor. I'm just going to assume at this point they want me to die or something. Anyways, we made our way to the infamous Grove Street, and if we came here looking for a fight, well it was a fight we are going to get. Dozens of enemies lined the sidewalk and houses, but there was one entity that stood out. Yes, for some reason another player just happened to be here while I was doing the mission. At first I thought he seemed to be just having fun running over the bowlers in his arena war vehicle, but after further advancement of my task, I noticed his dislike towards the handsome god known as Desmond. Thanks, dude. Oh, shooting my body. Great. That's real good sportsmanship. And while I have no quarrels with taking out a fellow GTA Onliner, it does become a bit of a tricky task when they are invincible. He's, a, he's invincible. Great. Of course he is. Of course he's a modder. Ah, don't you just love this game? Fortunately, my task was now to follow Vernon, who had left the Grove Street area, so my impossible battle against that sad little man came to an end. We soon ended up at a garage where we find one of the head ballers, P, being interrogated by our friend here. Don't act stupider than you is. I'm talking about Dre. The phone. Yeah, we heard about that shit. Wait, y'all think we got it? Dog, look at me. That ain't got nothing to do with us. We got nothing but respect for the homie Dre. Give me something, P. Fast. I heard there's something going on over in the projects. Vago's running their mouth about Dre playing some joints no one's heard. So, after going through all that, it wasn't even the ballers who had it? Great. Well, at least we do now know who does have the phone and the stolen music. The Vagos. I guess we're just going to war with all the gangs in Los Santos at this point. So we got ready for our final mission of the South Central Los Santos League, and this should be fun. The families and the ballers standing side by side against a common enemy, and Desmond leading the front. Whoo, baby, I'm excited. We met up with Vernon and P while making our way over to the projects, and once we got there, oh, all hell broke loose. But unfortunately, so too did one of Dre's hidden songs. We began to mow down the Vargos scum, but while we were distracted, one of them took off with the car and the music. But it wasn't long before Desmond caught up with his slow ass ride and took him down. It's honestly baffling that people still think they can get the better of Desmond the Demigod. Yeah, I like that nickname. So Desmond the Demigod took the lowrider and drove it back to the agency to finish up the mission and wrapping up all three of the music leaks up tight. It's been a successful operation so far, but there is still one loose end we need to tie up. That's right. Now, after all the cleanup crew work has been done, we just need to track down the original phone stolen from Dr. Dre himself. And it looks like we have just the squad to get the job done. Hey, Frizzle, man, look what I found. That motherfucker chopped went halfway through the stash before he got too high to eat the rest, man. Oh, Julie, my motherfucker got my shit all wet. Shit. Ugh, never mind. Lamar's here. We're all gonna die. Now, what Imani managed to uncover with the new information presented is all this music leakage BS leads back to a guy by the name of Johnny Henderson, or as Dre likes to call him, Johnny Guns. Apparently, this dude has held a grudge on Dre for over 20 years over some music royalty shit. But the reasons why he's doing this don't matter to us. Desmond and Franklin are men of business. So when shit needs to get done, oh boy, we get it done. So after finishing up the meeting, Franklin asked us to return Dre's car, which we took back at the start to help with the investigation. And I should expect nothing less from an award-winning famous artist and producer than to have a sexy beast of a ride. I was just, you know, enjoying my drive on over to Dre's studio when Franklin called and told us to hurry it up because Johnny Guns brought his crew and is trying to get to Dre and I assume kill him or take him hostage or something. Being the cool, calm and collected person Desmond is, he told Franklin to chill out, dog, because he was on his way. Once arriving at the scene, I decided to start things off in an exciting way to say the least. Honestly, this grenade launcher may be my favorite purchase I've made in this account so far. Uh, I take that back. Anyways, we continue to mop up the scum outside and- Why did you hit me? You dickhead. And then we made our way into the studio where Dre was holed up. My trusty assault shotgun came in handy in these tight spaces and I made decently quick work of the first few sets of gunmen. However, the further I got inside, the less armor and health I had left. Getting to Dre was no easy feat, but Desi pulled it off, just as he said he would. The party for Johnny Guns was officially over. But being the crazy son of a bitch he is, Dre decided to throw an actual party right after this whole ordeal. He hired a cleanup crew, invited some people, and we partied the night away. Like Royal Tenenbaum.
But wait, it's not over yet. Johnny Guns is still alive and kicking, and no score is settled until they pay back for what they did. So we headed back to our agency for the grand finale of this whole operation, namely called don't fuck with Dre. Imani the IT whiz chick found the general location of Johnny Guns. He seemed to be around Textile City near the Los Santos canals. After a little bit of driving around, we found the prick. They're here. Take them motherfuckers out and let's Hello, go. Johnny. Oh, uh, you ain't taking me out, baby. Wait, why am I not my car? What the hell? But uh, again, Rockstar the twats didn't let me stay in my wonderfully armored car and instead teleported me inside of a train cart. Sometimes I really just don't know what they're thinking. Anyways, it was business as usual as Desmond's raw combat prowess made easy work of Johnny's henchmen. But once we cleaned up here, Amani let us know that Johnny fled to LSIA, hiring a private pilot and a kill squad to protect his ass from the oncoming storm. But it seems Johnny is a bit too naive because I don't think there is a force in this world that Will stop Desmond from completing what he sets out to do. Well, except modders. Once we made it to the airport, we entered into one of the hangars through the side door and fired our way out into the open area. Through precision accuracy, taking cover, and just being a baller, really, we made it through Johnny's pathetic private army and laid eyes on the man who caused us all this trouble. We brought the slimy bastard outside, and I'm sure he recognized who was out there waiting for him. Well, he did say golf puts him in a better mood. After Johnny was taken away, Dre hopped in the car with me and gave me the privilege of listening to one of his new unreleased tracks. But you want to hear something? This is a world premiere right here, right now. What a banger. What an, what an absolute banger. <laughs> Uh, if you couldn't tell, there is no music playing. Probably because I have music turned off in the game, but honestly it makes this seem pretty hilarious, so I don't even care. I ended up driving Dre over to the Pacific Bluffs Country Club, where we would say our final goodbyes. Our job here was done, and Dre was back off to do whatever super rich, famous artists do in their free time. Probably go drink on a yacht, talk to beautiful women, or splash their cash in another mansion. But for your boy Desmond here? Well, there's a lot of opportunities in Los Santos, so we'll just have to see what's in store for him next. Uh, hello. Please don't shoot me. No! Oh, what did I do? Desmond, run! Run, Desmond, run! Get out of here! Fuck. Shit, he's in my car. That's not helpful. Man, fuck this shit. I just want to go home.